Well, oxygen has been detected in the clouds of Venus for the first time. So, what does that tell us about the planet? Joining me now live is astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU, Brad Tucker. Brad, great to see you as always. Thank you for joining us. So, why has this discovery excited researchers? Yeah, so discovering oxygen, and, and when we say oxygen, we're talking about just uh, atomic oxygen, oxygen by itself, not O2, the stuff that we breathe. And this is actually quite important because we haven't discovered it in the daytime side of Venus before. And there's a big question of why is the atmosphere of Venus so different than Earth? It has tons of carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and it's turned into this runaway greenhouse effect, which is this makes it makes it really hot and, and uh, inhospitable. So why did it arise like this? And was it wet before? A lot of people think that maybe Venus and Earth were very similar in the beginning, um, were similar in size, rough distancely, kind of, so to speak, um, from the sun, and therefore we could have had water and they could have had water. And so by finding this oxygen in this atmosphere actually hints that indeed, maybe there was a lot of H2O there before, um, something happened to cause it mostly to dissipate uh, and allowed the CO2 essentially to take over. But so by finding that oxygen in the higher layers of the atmosphere really shows, yeah, it was present on Venus, it still is present on Venus. And so our origins are maybe very, very similar uh, to Earth than we previously thought. Well, there you go. I mean, who would have thought, but uh, unsurprising uh, for sure, Brad. Now, this one's fascinating because one of the great mysteries has been solved, what, solved why dinosaurs became extinct after an asteroid. And, well, I mean, I was pretty surprised by the answer. Tell us what it is. Yeah, look, so, you know, pretty clear for a long time, asteroid hit the Earth. The question is, what part of that process wiped out and destroyed or, or killed most forms of life? So the asteroid hit, um, it exploded in the Earth's atmosphere, um, but it also smashed into the ground and created a massive crater that kicked up a whole bunch of dirt and dust that flew into the Earth's atmosphere. So it essentially vaporized granite and deep bedrock, you know, kilometers worth in terms of size and threw that into the Earth's atmosphere. Well, this process, it looks like, is responsible for about 70% um, of the most of the species dying out when this happened. So it not only um, directly killed some of that life, but it stayed in the Earth's atmosphere for decades. In fact, some of the simulations say it could have stayed up there for 100 to, 100 to a couple of hundred years in the Earth's atmosphere. This blocked out lots of sun, created a mini ice age, which killed the plants, and then that killed the rest of the dinosaurs that ate the plants, and then that killed the rest of the dinosaurs that ate those dinosaurs. So it was really the contribution of dust in the atmosphere from that asteroid impact that looks like it's responsible for most of the fatalities or, or wiping out the species of dinosaurs. There you go, dust. Who would have thought? But we finally have that answer. How, yes. That's so fascinating. Now, a Chinese commercial rocket company has successfully launched and has safely landed a test rocket. What more can you tell us? Yeah, so, you know, SpaceX has been famous for launching rockets. Um, their boosters come back down and land and can be reused. This has made them very economically um, and very efficient and has brought the cost down. Uh, well, this Chinese company, uh, as you're seeing here, um, has tested its first design of doing this. As you see, the rocket goes up, um, and then a short time later, it uses thrusters to steer itself down. Now, it didn't go all the way into space, but it was that very first step of showing they were getting the technology to go up and down in a controlled way. By doing so, that means the rocket is reusable, it'll bring those costs and launch costs down, uh, and then could be more regular, again, as we've seen with SpaceX and other companies like Blue Origin uh, and other competitors. So this is a big step forward for the private Chinese space industry, so to speak, uh, and can revolutionize their access into space, both people and satellites, just as we've seen SpaceX and others do uh, in the US and, and across the world. So has, has China modelled its rocket on SpaceX or, or is this idea of it being reusable, just it's just the way it is now? Look, you know, I, I think it's a bit of both. They've clearly looked at some of the lessons and designs from SpaceX, but this has to be the way going forward. In order to stay competitive, you need to make it cheap 
You need to make it reusable, uh, and you make it, need to make it reliable. Otherwise, you'll just go to another company uh, that can do that for you and bring those costs down. So if China wants to launch at the rate that we are seeing in the U.S. and other places and at the cost and reliability, that's kind of the way forward. And so it's a great thing for all of space uh, community, but really just showing how the space sector is rapidly evolving across the world. Yeah, fascinating. Absolutely. Just finally, Brad, Frank Borman, the Apollo 8 astronaut who led the first flight to the moon, has died at the age of 95. What an amazing legacy he leaves behind. He was. And look, and Apollo 8 was, in some cases, the, the riskiest mission uh, of the Apollo era. So he said it was the first to go around the far side of the moon. In doing so, they lose contact with Earth. When you go around that side, you can't contact Earth. They had to make sure that the orbits and angles and speeds were all perfect, else the craft would have sailed off into space. You know, it, in a lot of ways, it was the first time that showed this is really an endangered adventure, and he was the commander of it. And one Australia was drastically involved with. Honeysuckle Creek was responsible, uh, the station outside Canberra, for tracking and communicating and helping that mission. So uh, a pioneer in space, and obviously he'll be sorely missed. He certainly will in 95. What a fantastic uh, innings at that. That's right. Brad Tucker, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.